before we go on, I just want to clarify something. If you're no longer subscribed to Chris Stockman, if you don't like his content, if you don't like the direction that he's taken with his channel, I'm not making this video to change your mind. That's not what this video is for. I am making this video because I have things I want to say. But first things first, Kohex. Yes, I'm still subscribed to Chris Stockman. I've been watching Chris's content for, I can't be exact, but definitely more than 10 years. I love his content, I still do, and I'm clearly not the only one. In the past few years, his approach to content has changed. No hilariosities, no worst of year lists, and no negative reviews in general. But this year, he kind of broke that tradition a little bit with the now infamous video on Madame Web, which, admittedly, left a dent on his reputation within the avid movie gore space on YouTube. I don't know Chris personally, I don't know what he's like in real life, I can only go off of his content and what he's chosen to be open about or not. And he seems like a super swell guy. But with all that in mind, what do I think about Chris's approach to his channel these past few years? I had and continue to have no problem with it. Because he made it clear at one point that he was going to change his approach. Like this isn't something new that he instinctively started doing out of nowhere. He was open about it and he explained why. And I will go into further detail on this later in the video, but I do understand where he is coming from there. Now, I also understand why someone would say, well, what's the point of watching a review of his now? We all know what he thinks. You got a point. But I would argue that that's not 100% a bad thing. Example, my favorite movie of 2023 was The Artifice Girl. I'd go a step further. It's an all-time favorite. But what got me into watching the movie in the first place was Chris's video on it. Nobody else was really talking about it. Now he was, but that's not just it. It's the way he spoke about it that sealed the deal for me. Saw the movie blown right the fuck away. When he puts out a review now, yeah, it's predictably positive, but one, it's a movie I'm now keen to watch, but also he doesn't blindly heap praise on everything he talks about. He's still constructive. It's clear to me that he loves this art form. If there is an area that could be improved, he does address it. I don't always agree. He said something about the characters in A Quiet Place Day 1 that I disagreed with. But yeah, Chris's more film celebration approach to his channel, or words adhering to that effect, never bothered me. Obviously, I need to address the Madam Web video more directly. I mean, yeah, it's one of his weakest videos. Now, the backlash was blown way the fuck up. But he's not exempt from criticism here. He could have handled it better by keeping it simple. He should have just kept it simple. Madam Webb was terrible. Creatively and artistically, I couldn't make heads or tails of what that movie was trying to do. The whole thing completely fell apart and I wouldn't just chalk that up to studio interference. I'm not going to get in trouble for saying that. If Sidney Sweeney was able to go on SNL and make fun of it, none of us are in the firing line. If Dakota Johnson's press tour performance was anything to go by, none of us are in the firing line. But I get it. He's a director. He's sympathetic towards plights other directors go through in order to get something made. I acknowledge his compassion. But critical feedback is vital. For me, when I'm acting, whether it's on stage, on camera, or behind a microphone, the show always goes on until you're done with the gig because there's always feedback to receive. Now, if I get complimented, awesome. But if I have weaknesses that need addressing, I need to know what they are. There's always room to improve. You never stop. Chris didn't need to tiptoe around this. He should have just kept it simple. At the same time, it didn't make me feel so negatively. I definitely did not anticipate how controversial it would get in the YouTube space. Like, Movie criticism isn't going anywhere just because Chris Stockman didn't talk about Madame Webb the way everyone else did. That's why the backlash annoyed me more than the actual video did. Could Chris have conveyed himself better? Absolutely. Absolutely. Of course. But for me, was this really a big deal? No. No, it wasn't. I mentioned earlier that I was going to elaborate further on why I understand Chris's reasoning for the change in style with his content. Well, here we go. Folks, I have been on YouTube since 2010. From 2010 to 2019, my content consisted of movie reviews. Now, I know what you're thinking. Sean, what are you talking about? I just had a quick look through your channel and that content 
It's not there. Yeah, I know. I got rid of it. I deleted nearly a decade worth of material. And that is a decision that I do not regret. I'll explain why and I'll do my best to make it as relevant to the subject at hand. So folks, there was one review that I did on this channel. It was for a movie made here in Ireland. It was the most popular review of said movie here on YouTube. Now, a critical point to bear in mind is that I rated this movie a three and a half out of five. Good luck convincing me that that is a bad thing. But I dedicated the substance of the video to the areas where the movie could have improved. To my knowledge, that is how reviews tend to work. Now, this is where things get interesting because I got an email from the director of the movie asking me to take it down because I had a lot of negative things to say and that I could impact their chances of getting funding for their next project. I took it down and subsequently all the other material down, but it was more so for me than this individual. I was in my final year of college studying acting. I didn't want to burn bridges with a potential working relationship in the industry. And look, pandemic was a rough time for everybody. That was then. With hindsight, what I will unequivocally express is that what this individual did was fucking stupid. This was unmasked censorship in full swing. This was unprofessional, thin-skinned bullshit. They got publicity, free of charge, and positive. I know I'm not the problem there. I know. Word of advice to any aspiring or working directors watching this video, don't ever do what this person did. Don't ever do what this person did. That shit is not on. It's not on. It is so wrong. It's ridiculous. Folks, Chris's anxiety surrounding this, it's not unfounded. It's not irrational. Being professionally blacklisted, very, very real fear for me. I'm an actor first. I'll be at this now 20 years as of next year. And that's what I want to be recognized as first and foremost. I can't have it both ways. Chris kind of can. And that's great that he kind of can. Like he earned his popularity. Something about him stood out to so many, myself included. Like he has a couple of million subscribers. Now, why is it different for me? Well, it's kind of obvious, isn't it? Who am I, Sean McGee, to YouTube? I'm a tiny channel. I have a subscriber count that is not at all reflective of reality. But if I'm being completely honest with myself here, all of that content, all of this time that I have been on YouTube, what did I do to stand out? Not much, but that's on me. Eliminating all of that past content was both a personal and professional decision. What I'm doing with my channel now is I am repurposing it and experimenting with it in a way that's reflective of the trail that I want to leave behind, not the one that was there before. In a way, it's not entirely dissimilar to what Chris has done with his channel. But look, never too late to try again. I know more now, so I have a little bit more of an advantage and an understanding of what it is I want to put into my future content. So starting afresh, Here's hoping that it'll be better. I have occasionally seen comments on Chris's videos accusing him of being a Hollywood shill, a sellout, a wuss who's too scared of burning bridges with other people in the industry. Folks, as I said, if Chris has some kind of anxiety about being professionally blacklisted, I know what that feels like. I still feel that today and going forward. He's actively trying to make a mark in the filmmaking industry and it is important to progress. It is important for people to, at bare minimum, comfortably get on with you. Not everyone will, but hopefully enough will. It is important for you to make connections to get to where you want to be. Like those kind of comments are just not reflective of what Chris has talked about when he's tried to deal with the Hollywood system. Whatever he wants to prioritize, I'll respect it. There's plenty of channels on YouTube that are more review focused that you can watch. But most of these people are not on the same path that Chris is on. Reviewers matter too. They play a critical role in keeping artists honest, and that's important. But Chris is treading a path akin to YouTubers like Michael and Danny Filippo and Kane Pixels, and that's something that deserves more support than anything else. And that's what I want to dedicate what's left of this video towards. Shelby Oaks, man, I can't wait. Of course I donated to the Kickstarter campaign, but like Mike Flanagan as executive producer, Neon as distributor, Th this news, these developments, the progress that this movie has made, this is amazing. 
it's so inspiring and I'm happy for Chris. I'm intrigued to see what it was about his vision that got the attention of these huge names. It's quite a surreal thing to see someone I've been watching on YouTube for a long time to achieve this. Their dream. Chris is making his dream come true. I've no doubt he's had to battle like crazy to make it happen, but he's doing it. Like I said at the start, I don't know him personally, but I already get a strong sense of his passion and work ethic. You don't just get the attention of people like that without doing something to stand out. Chris did something to stand out in an amazing way. That's what deserves the attention. I don't know where people stand with him on the YouTube space, but my hope is that people have put aside all the stuff from before that I spoke about, because this is something to cheer. This is something to look forward to. If by some mad chance Chris is watching this, my heartfelt Kogordagas goes out to you and everybody else involved with Shelby Oaks. I'd love to work with you one day, sir, but until then, you have my Takiyakt, August Mass. Mad Suicide. Begachen Ella, Mila Boykas, Slan Live.